How ironic. If you've ever spent any time in academic circles, you've no doubt heard the expression, publisher perish. Simply put, it means that if you want to keep your teaching position, at least at any decent college or university, you've got to publish occasionally in academic journals. I suppose this is to prove that you've been doing important research, but it also contributes to the prestige of your school. My experience, at least in the English department here at the University of Southern Maine, is that the more obscure and unread the periodical, the more prestige is involved. I mean, if you don't write novels or stories that pretend to art, well then, you can kiss your chances for tenure goodbye. Bob Howard, a good friend of mine here, did just that. He wrote and sold dozens of stories and two novels. But because his work was viewed by the tenure committee as commercial fiction, he didn't keep his job. After he was denied tenure a few years back, he and I used to joke over drinks about how he had published and perished. I have reason to be cynical. The doctor who talked with me last night might have some fancier, more clinical terms for it, but I'm tempted to translate his conclusions about me to something a little simpler. Let's try. Crazy as a shithouse rat. That's crazy, all right. But keep reading. I'm putting all of this down as fast as I can because I know I don't have much time. I'm fighting the English teacher in me who wants to go back and revise, hone this sticker until it's perfect. But if I'm right? Oh, Jesus. If I'm right. Okay. I'll try to start at the start. Oops. Got a little redundant there. Sorry. Anyway, as I've always told my students, every story has a beginning, a middle, and an end. Life, I've found, unfortunately, doesn't always play out that way. Well, sure, the beginning's at birth and the end's at death. It's filling up the middle part that can be such a bitch. I don't know if this whole damn thing started when I first saw Rose McAllister. Ah, uh, Rosie. She was sitting in the front row on the first day of my 8 a.m. Introduction to English Literature class last fall. It might have been then that everything started, but I've got to be honest here. I mean, at this point, it may not matter at all, or it may be all that matters. I think I'll be dead, and really in hell within, possibly less than four hours. One thing I do know is, when I first saw Rosie, I didn't think right off the bat, God damn, I want to have an affair with her. That sounds so delicate, have an affair. I wanted to, sure, but that was after a while, once I got to know her. Once we started, though, we slept together whenever we could, which wasn't often, you see, because of Sally, my wife. Ah, my dear departed wife. I guess if I were really looking for the beginning to this whole damn mess, I'd have to say it was when we started our study of Marlowe's Dr. Faustus. You know, your classic deal with the devil story? I didn't mention too much of this to the police shrink because, well, 